The motivation for today's talk is to demystify Filecoin circulating supply. The reason we care about this is because circulating supply is a great lens by which to understand the protocol and the token dynamics that contribute to uh, the growth of the economy. This is also means that you know, understanding circulating supply is key to understanding governance decisions to help, to help inform better decisions uh, when kind of, as ZX mentioned, we analyze various improvement proposals, et cetera. Part of what we consider is how would this impact the underlying dynamics of growing this economy or circulating supply. Uh, quick disclaimer, uh, any and all models discussed are based on simple, uh, simple, simplified assumptions. You should do your own research. Uh, the Filecoin spec, which I've linked in the footnotes, uh, contains greater information uh, regarding how we kind of construct these models. And on a more positive note, big thanks to the Starboard team. We have some of those members here today. Many of the uh, kind of graphs and models are, um, originate from, from these phenomenal folks. Uh, feel free to talk to them as well. Um, about you know, some of their research and how they contribute to the Crypto Econ Lab network. Okay, great. So the first uh, part that kind of is the underlying force behind circulating supply is how was Filecoin originally allocated? So a maximum of two billion Filecoin will ever be created, but a big caveat here is that it is highly unlikely to reach this point even in the next 20 years. As ZX mentioned, uh, there, is, there, are these there, there are all these regulators of circulating supply, like performance-based minting. He showed you some of those charts. Uh, some tokens are he held in reserve. There are uh, kind of token dynamics like burning and locking, which all act to provide various regulatory kind of functions to circulating supply. The biggest takeaway is that unmined, unvested, locked, and burnt funds are not part of circulating supply. And in fact, these kind of tokens characterize most of, uh, you know, the file, like, uh, most of the tokens today on the network. File, circulating supply is only at about 300 million. Uh, so this two billion number is kind of just like this asymptotic bound uh, that we probably won't reach. Um, the pie chart on the right just kind of shows this original allocation. A uh, percentage was allocated for fundraising. A percentage was allocated to the foundation and PL. The majority is for mining and mining reserves. So uh, actually, the, the uh, activity on the network, like storage, committing storage capacity, retrieval deals, et cetera, uh, which kind of uh, are the foundational aspects of the network. Great. So the broad kind of overview is circulating supply is a product of token inflow and outflow. The two main sources of inflow uh, come from Genesis vesting and storage mining. Uh, the two sources of outflow are locking of tokens as well as network transaction fees or burning. Uh, this is a, you know, a chart that kind of displays those dynamics. You have mining, investing, kind of providing this upward pressure and circulating supply, which is kind of balanced by the downwards pressures from locking and, and burning. We'll go through each of these sources and kind of what determines how, how these kind of uh, interact with one another and also do some simulations, but keep this in mind. Uh, and Kind of in the back of your mind, when you have these sources of inflow and outflow, understand how they kind of provide these various kind of counterbalancing pressures. So the first and easiest part of token inflow is Genesis vesting. This was determined at network launch, um, and part of it was from fundraising for SAPT investors, which vests over uh, periods of six months to three years linearly. The other part, the vest from the foundation which is about 400 million, foundation and PL, that's about 400 million Filecoin uh, linearly vested over six years. The point being that this part of inflow to circulating supply probably ends right before 2027, so six years after mainnet launch. And then the remainder of circulating supply dynamics come, come from things like mining activities, burning, and locking, et cetera. So this is, the, this is the most deterministic part of circulating supply. The parts following this will, be act, will, will kind of be more of a active product of network state and what kind of plays out over the next couple of years. Great. So ZX uh, explained, there we go. So ZX explained a little bit about this kind of idea of simple baseline minting. But to tie this back to circulating supply, the idea is storage mining is aligned with useful storage. So the maximum amount of fill minted to storage miners will only be available if the network hits incredibly ambitious storage targets. So the chart on the left shows a maximum fill minted in years from testnet launch. 
the network would need to double in storage capacity each year in order to hit this target. And so the reality is that the minting that we should expect to see on the network is somewhere in between the simple minting uh, kind of uh, like, you know, line on the, on the bottom and the max minting at the top. So this is another implicit kind of regulatory mechanism circulating supply. The idea is we don't want to just inject all this fill into the economy unless it's been proven that there is added value being added by storage miners, et cetera, in forms of storage services. Uh, the chart on the right is kind of that idea that in the beginning of the network, a lot of network subsidies will come in the form of storage mining, like block rewards. As the network matures, then storage deals will, continue, will, will be the most kind of uh, prevalent force of, of minor uh, revenue and, and the block rewards uh, will, will diminish. So that kind of injection of circ circulating supply from block rewards will, will go down. Great. So ZX showed you one, one view. Another easy view to see this in practice is total mine file since, whoa, the total mine file since network launch. You see that it's, it's, it reaches this inflection point around uh, April 2021. This is when we hit the baseline minting target and we've kind of had stable upwards, you know, mining since then. Cool. Now we can talk a little bit about token outflow. So locked funds are temporarily removed from circulating supply. These tokens are not tradable and are locked as collateral since storage miners put up collateral as a pledge or promise that they will further consensus security and continuously provide reliable storage. If storage honestly and provide, prove reliable storage that they receive these locked funds back. But collateral locking is an essential crypto economic incentive to align storage provider activity with the goals of the Filecoin network to provide reliable decentralized storage services. In the process, this also provides a downwards pressure on circulating supply uh, because as more funds are locked, they're removed uh, as a way to kind of ensure security and stability on the network. Next part, is, uh, next part is burn, or network, or network fees. Um, network fees are burned and removed from circulating supply entirely. The idea is that as long as there, any, is there any action or utility on the network, Filecoin tokens will be consumed to compensate for the computation and storage resources on-chain messages consume. So this is something, this rate of token consumption is also in the hands of the community. Participants compete for on-chain resources, and the demand for this, such as block space for enabling transactions, is returned to the network via burning. So this is another regulatory downwards pressure on circulating supply that helps facilitate a healthy, balanced economy. Great. Cool. So you can see how locking and burning both act together uh, as these regulatory mechanisms. The chart on the left shows uh, locking, as a, locking and burning as percentages of, of circulating supply. Uh, on the right, you see the daily changes and fluctuations which are reacting to uh, things like locking, locking, vesting, mining, etc. Great. So we want to put it all together. I showed you this chart in the beginning, but now we can see each, and in, each individual component and how they interact with one another to get to this final you know, circulating supply number. Um, currently, vesting, uh, and my, uh, vesting is a huge portion of the inflow. Uh, we discussed that this would kind of stop the, over the course of the next four years um, as the linear vesting schedules cease. Mining is also uh, a large part due to the fact that we are at our maximum baseline minting targets. Um, burn are providing that downwards pressure. Just a quick caveat, if you're looking at coin market cap to look at circulating supply, there might be a small difference because coin market cap doesn't include uh, Filecoin in the wallets of founders and that are, that are dispersed to, the, to Phil and PL. The point being though is that the underlying dynamics for CMC's definition and the protocol definition are the same. They're subject to mining and locking and burning, which are all the fundamental core principles that determine the long-term um, sure. that determine the long, the, you know, the most important forms of token dynamics that underlie circulating supply. Cool. So 
Just some simula simulations, the disclaimer still holds true. These are samples, these are just meant to give you an idea of how all these factors play in with one another. Um, if we have um, network projections of growth, uh, we can see all those activities play out. This orange chart here is vesting. You know, you see that you know, stop at 2027, so we have this increase in circulating supply from minting uh, activities, investing, and then that kind of tapers off and decreases as the network should hopefully have been mature and most of revenue for miners, et cetera, will come from storage deals, et cetera. If we change uh, this slightly and, and, and change the growth targets, that changes this, this trajectory. Uh, you know, if the, if the network grows more rapidly, then this kind of process is accelerated. More fill is locked at a higher rate. Um, and there's, uh, you know, you, you see, but you see the same general activity play out. Uh, there's another circumstance. One second. Great. One more circumstance is if, what if uh, there's a lot of demand for block space? What if burning increases? Then you see uh, uh, kind of burning will apply this downwards pressure on circulating supply continuously. But the idea is thematically very much the same. Uh, you, we have this steady increase in circulating supply from vesting, uh, mining activities, et cetera, but those both taper off and then the network will reach this equilibrium where Phil's value is tied to the utility that it provides on the network. Um, so thank you guys. This right here, if you're just curious and want to see like the presentation, uh, I have links to all these observables that are created by the Starboard team. You can play with these simulations yourself. Uh, again, these are these assumptions were uh, were kind of samples. Uh, do your own research, make your own assumptions. Uh, but uh, they sh hopefully this gives you a better idea of how these dynamics, uh, underlying circulating supply, kind of interact with one another.